finally moving, the story of Pretty Lights. On April 4th, 2023, fans of Pretty Lights were overjoyed when Derek broke nearly five years of silence to announce his return to playing shows and festivals this year. For years, those fans have been hopeful that this time would come, though the more time passed, the more unsure people became about whether or not this would ever become a reality. In honor of his triumphant return, we're gonna take a look at the nearly two decade long career of one of the most influential producers of the 2010s, a man who deserves to have his face on the Mount Rushmore of the new age electronic music boom. To better understand Pretty Lights, we need to take a look at who Derek was before Pretty Lights. Derek Vincent Smith was born in 1981 in Fort Collins, Colorado. Derek became interested in music early in his life. In seventh grade, his friends had a band called The Freeze, and they told him if he could get a bass guitar, then he could be in the band. He got a 4 a.m. paper out to start making money, and he saved up for months until he was able to purchase his first bass. When he finally got the guitar, his friends said he couldn't play well enough, so they didn't let him in the band. And they were like, man, you, don't, you have no idea how to play this thing. Like, you, you can't be in our band. Like, they let me on, man. So I got let on into being in the music industry. He took bass lessons to get his skills up to speed, and eventually he was led into the band. In Derek's own words, the band was a Beastie Boys type thing where we rapped and played chilled out funk music. When Derek was in 10th grade, the band entered into Fort Collins Battle of the Bands and got second place. One fun fact about the band is that all of the members have now released music on Pretty Lights Music, Derek's record label, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about that later. Derek was also a rapper in his early days going by the name D-Zone. He used to manage a calzone shop and he actually had a calzone named after his rap name. He eventually was fired for closing the shop early one day so that he could show up to his friend's first production set, and this was his last legitimate job before starting Pretty Lights. Lights. In addition to playing the bass, he also plays the keys and the flute, though I'm unsure when he learned to play these. Some of Derek's major musical influences growing up include Pink Floyd's The Dark Side of the Moon, Shamrocks and Shenanigans by House of Pain, and Lucy Ford, The Atmosphere EPs. Josh Davis, aka DJ Shadow, was also a massive influence in Derek's life as it got him into vinyl, which played a huge part in his career as Pretty Lights, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about that later. Every day in high school, Derek would wake up to DJ Shadow's 1996 Introducing album on his CD alarm clock. He would listen to the entire record every morning before school. The innovator that really led me to have such an obsession with the wax was uh, Josh Davis, aka DJ Shadow, uh, introducing 1996. Man, all like every day in high school, that was my alarm clock. You know, my CD alarm mm -hmm. clock. I'd wake up to that <laughs> record and listen to the whole thing every morning. So yeah, I. I I became obsessed with wax over those, those years. Here's some other facts about his childhood. He played basketball and dreamed of going pro one day, which is a pretty reasonable dream for him since he's six foot nine. In elementary school, he went to a public school, but around middle school, his mom was afraid that he was gonna turn into a bad kid, so she sent him to a private Baptist academy. And he eventually was expelled for smoking some brown frown, in his own words, on the playground with his friends, using a Sprite can and a paper clip. Years later, he started growing and selling sticky tasty flowers to fund his music career. One of his favorite strains to cultivate was Hawaiian sativa. In his own words, it was thick, pungent, and really resinous. If you cured it right, it had the perfect crumble factor. It cures easily and that's extremely important to me. When he was growing, he was worried about the big electricity bills blowing his cover as many people got busted because of that. And keep in mind, this was in Colorado pre-2012 when marijuana was actually legalized. Though it wasn't paying the bills that was a problem, because he said when he was in the game, the money was big. After graduating from Rocky Mountain High School, Derek went to the University of Colorado at Boulder, where he first began to experiment with electronic music production, using a computer and basic software to create beats using samples from vinyl. However, he dropped out after his first year to focus all of his attention on music. In 2004, Derek started his music project called Pretty Lights with his friend and former bandmate, Michael Mennert. The name was inspired by a 1966 New Year's Eve Pink Floyd and the Who poster. The signature Pretty Lights sound is all about sample-based production, blending hip-hop, funk, soul, and electronica, though it incorporates many other genres as well. In 2006, they released what would be their first and only album as a duo called Taking Up Your Precious Time. The album was well received by fans and features some of Pretty Light's signature sounds including heavy beats, soulful samples, and electronic textures. Around that time, Michael Minnert had some things that he had to deal with in his personal life, so Derek continued on with Pretty Lights as a solo act. Over the next few years, Pretty Lights continued 
continued to build a following by releasing his music for free. At the time, this was a groundbreaking way to tackle the music industry, as things were much different back then, with album sales being extremely important for most artists. Derek said it would have been hard to get people to pay for music they had never heard, and he was less concerned about the money and really just wanted his music to be played through as many speakers as possible. To help promote his music, he would message hundreds of people on MySpace telling him about the music. And these strategies proved to be hugely beneficial as he watched his monthly downloads go from hundreds to tens of thousands every month. His popularity started to grow with college kids around Colorado, and he was asked to play various house parties as well as college parties. In 2008, Pretty Lights released his first solo album, Filling Up the City Skies, a two-disc experience that included one of his biggest tracks, Hot Like Sauce. He also played his first show as Pretty Lights at the Fox Theater in Boulder, Colorado. He performed to a small crowd playing a mix of original tracks and remixes of popular songs. It was a humble beginning, but it was the start of something that would grow to be much, much bigger. He played a few other shows that year, one of which being at Cervantes Masterpiece Ballroom in Denver, and I've got a fun little fact about that. Derek was briefly managed by the owner of Cervantes, Scott Murill, in the early days of his career, so Scott helped ease him into live music by booking him to play at his own venue. He also managed some guy. Oh yeah, I was I was Pretty Lights first manager and agent. In 2009, Pretty Lights gained widespread recognition after his 2006 song Finally Moving was featured in a Michelob Ultra Super Bowl commercial. The exposure from the commercial catapulted him into the mainstream and his project and popularity continued to grow. Following this massive spike in publicity, he released his third album, Passing By Behind Your Eyes. In the same year, he also launched his first multi-city curated event, a music festival of sorts called the Illumination tour. The events featured a diverse lineup of artists and took place in multiple cities across the U.S. It was a massive undertaking for the young musician, but it was a huge success and it helped cement his status as a rising star in the electronic music scene. Derek actually said in an interview that for his early shows, he just pretended to press buttons on stage to make it look like he was doing something. Though once he put together his live show, it was actually live. For his early live shows, he performed alongside drummer Corey Eberhard, playing festivals such as Bonnaroo, Rothbury, and Minnesota. Minnesota's 10,000 Lakes Festival. Derek once said that he doesn't like the typical EDM world where DJs are glorified cheerleaders. He felt that with live shows, there always needs to be the potential to mess up. In 2009, he got to play Red Rocks for the first time when he opened up for Sound Tribe Sector 9. He closed out that same year with a New Year's Eve set at the Vic Theater in Chicago, where he debuted his remix of the Chicago Bulls intro. The actual name of the song is Serious by the Alan Parsons Project. In 2010, Pretty Lights released three different EPs, Making Up a Changing Mind, Spilling Over Every Side, as well as Glowing in the Darkest Night, which landed at number 18 on Billboard's Dance and Electronic Album chart. He actually referenced Making Up a Changing Mind in his recent PL Starship Announce video that he just released a few weeks ago. The Starship scene on the cover of the 2010 EP makes an appearance at the end of his comeback video. It's a CGI rendering of the Starship floating under what appears to be the credit City Connection Bridge in New Orleans, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that at the end of the video. 2010 also brought some of his famous remixes such as his rework of Pink Floyd's Time, Kanye West's All of the Lights, Jay-Z's Empire State of Mind, and Steve Miller Band's Fly Like an Eagle. This year we also got to see the revamp of his live show, in which he replaced drummer Corey Eberhard with Adam Deitch, who has an incredibly diverse skill set which includes production credits for many major artists such as 50 Cent and Justin Timberlake. In their first year performing together, they tackled some major festivals playing at Coachella, Summer Camp, and Camp Bisco, just to name a few. 2010 was also the first year he got to headline Red Rocks, selling out the major venue, which was a longtime dream of his. This year, he also started his record label, Pretty Lights Music. The first release for the label was Michael Minnert's 16-track album, Dreaming of a Bigger Life. In 2011, he released the single, I Know the Truth, which is one of his biggest tracks to date. This year, he also sold out Red Rocks once again, which was the beginning of a nine-year streak of selling out Red Rocks. In April of 2011, a series of tornadoes ripped through Alabama, causing serious damage to the city of Tuscaloosa, which was a place that Derek was very fond of since it was a frequent tour stop for him in his early days. Uh, this thing is going to be coming basically right down Skyland Boulevard. This is an extremely violent situation. Notice the power flashes. Please. It just passed the Tuscaloosa County or the Tuscaloosa City the, Police the, the Department. The Police Department is down there. It's the, crossing over the industrial area in South Tuscaloosa near all the places where they take the cars when you have an accident. If you're down that way, down Greensboro, it's on you now. It's moving toward McFarland. Derek has always been committed to social and political issues, so when he saw what happened to Tuscaloosa, he knew he had to do something. He got in touch with STS9 and Big Gigantic, and together they put on a charity concert to raise money to help rebuild the city. 
Fuck yeah, Tuscaloosa, come on! 2011 was also the year that Hyundai launched their regeneration project to promote the new Hyundai Veloster. They selected a handful of electronic producers at the top of their game and paired them with artists of various other genres to create unique tracks. Pretty Lights was paired with country artists Leanne Rimes and Ralph Stanley, and together they created the track Wayfaring Stranger. Some of the other producers tapped for the project include Skrillex, DJ Premier, and The Crystal Method. In 2012, we saw the release of two singles from Pretty Lights, We Must Go On and You Get High. He also played Red Rocks for the third year in a row, except this time he sold out back-to-back -back nights. By this point in his career, the reach of Pretty Lights' music was worldwide, so he began to run into some legal issues for his use of uncleared samples. He was sued for a sample used in his 2006 song, Happiness Troubled Faces, so he had to take the song down, as well as pay the record label that owns the rights to the sample. It's now available on streaming platforms, so I'm not sure exactly exactly what happened there. Maybe the record label allows it to stay up as long as they receive a cut of the streaming royalties. Some of Derek's music that includes Syl Johnson's samples are So Much in the Dark, which contains a horn line from Syl, and Looking for Love but Not So Sure, which contains breaks and a vocal from Syl. Love You Left Behind also samples Syl Johnson. Whenever Derek has had to pay for sample use, he tries to make sure that the money goes to the artist or the family of the artist rather than a major record label. 2013 was a big year for Pretty Lights, as it was the year that he released the album A Color Map of the Sun. He had been crafting this album for years, and in my humble opinion, it's one of the most unique musical projects conceptually ever to exist. For this album, Derek wanted to continue to utilize his sample-based sound, except this time he wanted to create all of the samples himself, rather than pulling from other artists. He hired musicians to create breaks that were then pressed to vinyl, which he would then sample from in order to create the album. He wanted these vinyl records to incorporate as many instruments as possible, while using old-school recording techniques to create the exact sound that he was looking for. The breaks were recorded mostly in Brooklyn and New Orleans, and as an end result he had a crate full of vinyl to work with for the final productions. And additionally, to fit the theme of the project, he decided not to use any digital synthesizers, so all of the synths on the album are modular. When the album was released, he included many of the original session recordings that he sampled from to create the final product. He later released an entire visual side of the project. After he released the album, he delayed the release of the visuals, as he wanted listeners to first create their own interpretation of the music before they saw it put into a visual framework. The album received a Grammy nomination for Best Dance Slash Electronic Album. This same year, he started touring with a full live band, playing seated theater venues that you normally wouldn't see electronic acts play at. He wanted to play at these venues because he felt that the nature of them would cause fans to pay greater attention to the intricacies that were happening on stage. And for the second year in a row, he sold out back-to-back -back nights at Red Rocks, with it being his fourth year in a row playing the venue. That same year, he also released one single, Around the Block featuring Talib Kweli. In 2014, Pretty Lights released The Hidden Shades. It was a limited edition two-disc vinyl that included four new original tracks as well as four remixes of those tracks. From 2014 through 2018, he continued his streak of selling out back-to-back -back nights at Red Rocks. He played many shows over those years up through 2017, but in 2018, the only shows that he played were those two nights at Red Rocks, and those are the last shows that he's played to date. Over these next five years, Pretty Lights disappeared from the public eye to focus on his physical and mental health. As a decade of rigorous touring can be grueling on the body and mind. The break was well deserved as Derek had already given so much to his fans in the world over the span of his career. Fans anxiously awaited to hear news of a comeback, but as time continued to pass, a lot of fans started to lose hope. By early 2023, I think it was safe to say that a large portion of his fan base assumed that he would not be coming back but they were about to be in for a huge surprise. On Tuesday, April 4th, 2023, Derek broke his five years of silence by posting a visually stunning video on his social media, which featured him singing the song Highwayman through a vocoder, but changing the lyric Highwayman to Pretty Light. Lyrically, it was a perfect choice as it encapsulated the journey he had been going through, ultimately announcing I'll be back again, followed by the announcement of a new tour. It's possible that Derek's longtime friend and former member of Pretty Lights, Michael Minnert, will be a part of this new tour, because in the video, as soon as it says Says, perhaps I may become a pretty light again, it cuts to a shot of Derek and Michael playing Red Rocks together. Though this is by no means confirmed, only a theory. This video gives me chills every time I watch it, ultimately just because I'm so happy that Derek seems to have found peace and happiness once again. It appears that this is the beginning of a full-blown comeback, as he has since announced that he will be playing a few festivals later this year. Everything Derek has accomplished as Pretty Lights has been jaw-dropping, and I'm so grateful that we get to see him continue his musical journey. He stands alone artistically as he is 
carved out a niche that no one has been able to fill, and I'm so excited to see how he continues to grow down this path. The Pretty Lights project is finally moving once again.